Um, and she's currently establishing a fund to provide private debt capital for small and medium enterprises in emerging markets. Gloria has a wide experience working on Wall Street. Um, she, like for 30 years actually, and before establishing Trilink, she was um, CEO of Deutsche Bank's North America Private Wealth Management Division. Um, and I'm very happy that you came here for, for sharing your thoughts. Thank you, Claudia. We have Masaru Arai. He's chair of the Social Investment Forum Japan. He's working on promoting sustainable and responsible investments to Japanese investors, including institutional investors like pension funds. Before joining the Social Investment Forum, he was the chief investment officer of Daiwa Asset Management, which is the second largest asset management company in Japan. Very pleased to have you here. Then we have Wendy Hatt, Wendy Peter Hatt. She works for USAID, which is the US Agency for International Development. Um, her current project involves establishing reporting standards for impact investment of not for profit organizations. And Wendy joined USAID in 2010, and before that, she worked for private equity projects in Sub Saharan Africa. She also was managing a project in Ghana to introduce a new approach of education. Thank you for joining us, Freddy. And last but not least, Frederick Suri is CEO of Investments of BNP Paribas Investment Partners, based in Paris. BNP Paribas offers a social response for investing for the clients in different asset classes, including equity bonds and private equity. Frederick worked before at different functions in the investment industry, such as head of asset allocation at Credit Lyonnais. And thank you for joining us, Frederick. So, the topic of our discussion is an embarrassment of choices. It's, I, I like the title very much because it reminds us that there's really a huge universe of choices out there. It's not about the threats, not about the negatives, it's really about the positives. We have choices all over the world, global choices. And even if we maybe don't have much time to change the structure of finance and the structure of the economy, I think. We have a lot of opportunity there. And I'm very happy to have you all here to um, give us your thoughts. And uh, later on, I want to really get a lot of input from your side and, and questions. And, um, but let me first ask Gloria, um, what are your thoughts of um, the trends in social impact investment and sustainable investments up to 2020? What do you think will happen in this decade? Um, what I think will happen is that there will continue to be a lot more products that get launched and um, that there will be more transparency and more accountability going forward, or at least I hope that's what happens. Um, and at Trilink, we're an impact fund manager, um, and our goal is to actually match investor groups with particular impact funds. Um, that deliver both a competitive investment return and can track and report and prove impact. Um, and so, as you mentioned, we're launching our first fund, uh, the first big retail fund, actually, we have other funds, uh, with the help of Caprock Group. I think some of these math is here. Um, they're one of our partners. And so, our first fund, which is a $1.25 billion fund um, for U.S. non accredited investors will offer, for the first time, retail investors the opportunity to have both um, a competitive financial return and impact, right? We will track and report on all the impact created by the portfolio. And how many of you here think that people, given the choice of doing good or not doing good, would rather do good? Yes, so do we. So <laughs> we're basically saying, look, the problem comes when they're forced to make a trade-off. Uh, between competitive return and will, how much return will somebody give up to do good. All of our research has shown that people don't want to give up return to do good. So if they don't have to give up return, they'll do good rather than not. Um, but they don't want to give up return to have to do good. Um, and 
if they do, then that comes out of their philanthropic bucket, right? So they put certain money aside for philanthropy and certain money is, is investment. <coughs> Um, and if they have to give up return, it goes to philanthropy. So we want to try to help the industry create more and more products um, that actually are professionally managed, that look like traditional investment products, but hold a high standard for delivery of impact. So that, that sounded very optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> so now we hear the Japanese perspective. And, and Masaru, could you say from the Japanese perspective, where are the trends heading and, and, and what do you think will happen in this game? Uh, yes. <coughs> uh, before talking about the future of the Japanese market, the, I have to tell you first, because the audience is not Japanese here. <laughs> I'm uh, only, probably the only Japanese here in this room. Um, so, uh, the first thing I have to tell you is that, uh, well, it's a uh, uh, balance. Well, <laughs> encouraging this uh, is uh, another part of it, but uh, well, Japanese ESG market or the responsible investment market has peaked in 2007. Um, currently, the level of the uh, outstanding amount of these investment is about only 20% from the peak for the last five years. So 80% have gone to the other part of the world. And, uh, well, that is a very disappointing situation for Japanese market. But there is some changes for the, the Japanese investors shifting from equity markets to the bond market in general. Because the well, general market condition of equities in Japan is still, even comparing to the US market, is still hovering around 15% well, lower than the after the bottom. Uh, when we experience the uh, uh, shock in the United States. It's partly because of the earthquakes we experience in Japan. Uh, so, uh, in general, people are shifting from investment from equities to bonds or other, other investments. But the, there is also a quite uh, uh, interesting shift in the area of uh, ESG investment or responsible investment. Because uh, after the peak in 2007, the, the people, well, this is a, re a retail market, retail investors or private investors, started to invest in the impact investment, uh, green bond investments, and uh, microfinance investments. So uh, this is, uh, well, something uh, very international products, but uh, it's a bond investment, so get a higher return uh, for a certain period than comparing to the Japanese interest rate. And also, uh, the purpose uh, is very clear. How they, well, when you invest it in, into bonds, how the money is used for. And that is a one clear point for Japanese investors shifting from liquidity to these funds. So the current uh, outstanding amount of these bonds, uh, as an aggregate number, is about 5 billion euro. Okay. And exceed, exceeded already the equity ESG investment in Japan. And you think this trend will continue? Well, I think it's continued. Uh, the, the one of the problems that Japanese uh, well, uh, investors face for this responsible investment is still the concept of responsible investment is something imported from the United States or Europe and it, it was very difficult to understand how they apply to the Japanese situation. But what is happening in the market in Japan is shifting from that kind of ideas for, but to the something really based on their needs in the society. Or well, I can tell you another thing, that is uh, community investment. Community investment was not popular in Japan in the past, but after the what does it mean, community? community investment, I like to yeah, explain that, that uh, well, it's after especially the earthquakes and the tsunami disaster in Fukushima uh, area. Uh, that is because uh, we, Japanese investors want to some help or assist these local areas by investing their money 
Cioè, di sempre. 